Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie and I am the owner and artist behind Salvaged by K. Scott. I am just about to start putting some paint on this beautiful antique armoire that I picked up from my local Habitat for Humanity Restore a few weeks ago. Now the finished effect that I'm hoping to get on this piece is an authentically old, chippy, French country sort of paint finish. I want this armoire to look like it has been forgotten in a beautiful French country farmhouse for years. So to achieve this look, paint is important. On this project, I'm going to be using some milk paint. Milk paint is a non-toxic, biodegradable, water-based paint that has been used for thousands of years. A true milk paint will always come to you in a powdered form. It's a mix of powdered milk protein, lime, and pigments. Now, milk paint tends to naturally crackle, chip, and flake. So it's a great way to achieve an authentic looking old paint finish. The thing about milk paint that can be a little bit tricky is it's extremely unpredictable. You never quite know where or when it's going to crackle, chip, or flake. Often that unpredictability and loss of control results in the most beautiful finishes. Now you should know that if you're interested in using milk paint on a piece of furniture and you're not looking for a crackled or chippy finish, you can also purchase an additional product called Extra Bond. It gets mixed in right with your milk paint and helps stabilize it and prevent it from cracking and chipping as much as it normally would. On this project, I am using Shacto Interiors brand milk paint in the color Beach Rose. It's a really pretty soft pink color. Always follow your manufacturer's instructions when it comes to mixing milk paint. Most are equal parts powder and water. You want to whisk up or stir up your paint really well and let it sit for about 10 minutes to let that powder and pigments fully dissolve into the water. Another important thing to remember when you're mixing up your milk paint is only mix up what you're going to need for each coat. Since it's made of milk, it will go bad. And if you do end up having paint left over after you're finished your coat, you do need to cover it and store it in the refrigerator. Now to get this guy ready for my first coat of paint, I did do a little bit of prep work off camera. I had to add a few extra nails to this piece of trim as it was coming loose. And lastly, I went over the entire piece with some 220 grit sandpaper on my sanding block just to scuff up the shiny original surface. Since my end goal for this piece is to have it still looking old, I'm not too worried with any dings or nicks in the finish. This will just add to the overall character of the piece at the end. This is pretty typical coverage for the first coat. It can be a little bit scary because it's translucent, but that will fill in very nicely with the second and possibly third coat. My 
My second coat of milk paint is dry on this piece and you can see it is starting to do its thing. I'm getting lots of gorgeous crackling and flaking. I'm going to go ahead and apply the third coat and we'll see where we end up after that. Now that I've got three coats of milk paint on there and I'm happy with the coverage, I'm going to go in with some 220 grit sandpaper on my sanding block and knock down all those chips. Now that is pretty chippy. Just what I was hoping for. Milk paint is a porous paint, just like chalk paint, which means to get it to live up to its best potential, you need to seal it. Instead of using a liquid top coat, like I usually use over my chalk painted finishes, with milk paint, I like to use either a hemp oil or a wax to seal my paint. The reason for that is the liquid top coat is a water-based product. The water in the top coat tends to reactivate the milk paint and make it chip even further. On this piece, I'm gonna be using some white patina furniture wax. It will give the piece sort of a natural weathered or limed finish and tone back some of that brown. Well, I definitely think I was successful in creating the old world, chippy, forgotten farmhouse style that I was looking for. The thing to remember when you're working with milk paint is it's unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you'll get lots of super duper chipping like this. Sometimes you'll get none. You always need to be flexible about what your end product is going to be. If you do get your first few coats of paint on and it's just not chipping like you were hoping for, you can try hitting it with some warm air from a blow dryer or carefully with a heat gun. Sometimes that warm air will cause the paint to react and start to crackle and chip. And remember, if you're going to use milk paint and you don't want any chipping, you do need to add that product called Extra Bond. I have used quite a few different brands of powdered milk paint over the years and Shacto Interiors is by far my favorite. I find that Kristen's paint dissolves really well. It always comes out in a beautiful creamy consistency and I get really great coverage from it. Make sure you go ahead and check out the Shacto Interiors website if you're looking for milk paint, milk painting products, hardware, 
or more chippy furniture like this. Thank you so much for following along with me again today as I played with paint. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and if you want to watch me paint and create in the future, please hit that subscribe button. I will catch you guys next time. Did I do a good job covering up the barbecue in the background there with my fat head?